Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the last of the 8 tutorials that are available in game in Steel Division upon release of the game. In the previous video I showed you the comprehensive tutorials from 1 to 7. In this one I'm going to be adding my own comments to tutorial 8 which takes us through the skirmish. Now the skirmish in this game is a good opportunity to look at player versus player combat which is simulated in this case versus an AI. I will be talking through the importance of a battle group made before you enter multiplayer as well as talking through the way that I play the game during the skirmish tutorial. Let's jump straight in. In this exercise, you will be free to put to use what you have already learnt in a real skirmish condition. You're being granted access to all the classes of the battle group. Click Next to compose your battle group. Fill all the units packed slots available to validate your battle group. Recon units can reveal enemy positions and sneak up stealthily into enemy territory. Fill all slots with the available pack. There we are guys, making our battle group for the 8th tutorial. And just something that I wanted to mention was to pay attention to the unit cards on the right side. So the commentator said that they can stealthily move into enemy territory. And this is directly because if we click on the scouts unit, we can see they are very good stealth. And that basically gives them the opportunity to get into the enemy lines without being spotted. Basically, because it has very good stealth, enemy recon and infantry and other, every other unit will have more trouble trying to view that unit. At close range, it will still be spotted, so please be aware of that. Let's move on to infantry. Infantry units have various functions depending on their equipment and are deployed with their transport. Fill all slots with the available pack. Now there isn't really much to say about infantry in the tutorial here other than be aware of HE values on their guns and also the range, effective range of those guns. So it can be easy to look at an infantry card and see that, oh look, they have really high HE power on some of their guns. However, these guns are only effective at 100 meter range. So you are missing out on six of your total of 16 HE power if you engage at 300 meter range. So at 300 meter range, you'll be engaging with nine of your M1 Garands and you'll be engaging with a 30 caliber machine gun, which will give you 10 HE power. If you engage at 100 meter range, however, you'll be adding the capability of two of your Thompson submachine guns. Definitely something to be well aware of when checking out your infantry. Furthermore, some infantry come with AT weapons, some do not. For example, the glider rifles do not, and the able AB rifles do. Another thing to definitely consider when you are choosing units in a full battle group. Let's move on to tanks. Tanks are powerful, but blind units able to engage any ground threat. Fill all slots with the available pack. Now when it comes down to tanks, you're looking at the AP value, which is the yellow circle with the number, and the armor value, which is the shield number. For each AP power you have higher than the opposing armor, you get increased penetration chance. AP power also increases by 1 for every 100 meters you are closer to the target. Penetration chance can be viewed by hovering enemy units. The last thing being, look at how many machine guns they have, because this is pretty important in considering an infantry support role. Support units can provide leadership or fire support, or supply ground units. Fill all slots with the available pack. Now the support tab is generally quite confusing because when you are creating your own battle groups in the future you will notice that you can get command units sometimes without even armaments. However you must 
retain the fact that command units are extremely important for increasing the effectiveness of every other unit surrounding it. So with the support tab, it's very important that you balance the amount of command units you bring in with the rest of your deck. Otherwise pick support units that support your strategy and a lot of it comes down to preference. Anti-tank units can ambush and neutralize armored vehicles. Fill all slots with the available pack. Something to note about anti-tank is that some of the anti-tank guns can have HE values. In this case both the M3 gun and M1 gun only have the 8 and 11 AP power respectively. However, some AT guns will also have HE value which allows them to shoot at infantry. Now this can be sometimes a blessing and a curse because it can reveal your gun by firing at long distance and that will target infantry and then you will, like I said, reveal your AT gun and then that can be targeted by enemy planes, enemy artillery and so on. It gives away the position. What you can do in game is select return fire which is a separate command in the bottom right which will only attack a unit upon your own command or unless it gets spotted. Something to be wary of. Let's just take all of these three cards and move on to anti-air. Anti-air units protect your ground units from aerial threat by suppressing any aircraft in their range. Fill all slots with the available pack. Something to be wary of with anti-air is that the effectiveness of suppression is generally quite reliant upon HE value. In this case you can see that the MGMC has 16 HE power. This makes it very effective at taking on aircraft at close range. Because the difference between the MGMC and the CGMC is that the CGMC comes with a 37mm gun which does allow it to engage at 1000 meter range and therefore can do a lot of damage before the enemy gets closer. Both are effective in their own roles. Let's move on to artillery. Artillery units can strike at long range while the mobile OP units can call in heavy off-map artillery strikes. Fill all slots with available packs. So with artillery, same as anti-air, be well aware of the range of units you are selecting. In this case, the airborne mortar has a range of 900 meters, which is actually not very good. However, because it is a two-star veteran unit, thanks to the experience indicator at the top of the unit card, you can see that it will increase its rate of fire because of that, making the mortar very quick at suppressing enemy units. Off-map artillery is also something to be well aware of. You can check how effective artillery is by hovering over the unit card that sits behind the vehicle. And this here tells us that the naval battery has 30 HG power and a splash of 105 meters. When you have bought the unit, use the bottom left of the UI to call in the strike. The Calliope is a really nice rocket artillery unit. Some rocket artillery units can come with smoke and that can be extremely effective. In this case, the Calliope does not, but still can provide extremely good suppression with its 14 HE power rockets. Let's move on to air. All units have various functions depending on their loads. Fill all slots with available packs. Something to note with aircraft is that often Recon aircraft in multiplayer and skirmish are not particularly useful. Just because their resilience is very bad, which means they can be shot down very easily, they are, their speed is very slow. So an enemy fighter can very easily come in, the, come in and shoot one of these down in no time at all, wasting 75 of your requisition points and leaving you without a plane and the recon information that could easily be provided by ground recon. Furthermore, it uses up valuable activation points and an air tab slot. The speed on the Mustang, you can see, is extremely fast. 700 km per hour speed, one of the fastest aircraft in the game. I would always recommend bringing in high speed fighters, but you must be aware that sometimes aircraft can overshoot their targets, especially in an air-on-air -air engagement. 
Speed is not always the best. You must also consider resilience and their agility. Aside from fighters, multi-role bombers and rocket aircraft are chosen dependent on battle group and you can find that information in my battle group overviews. So that's all the units added to the deck, let's validate that and jump into the skirmish tutorial. In this exercise you will need to gain map control. The more ground you control, the more victory points you earn. Your objective is to have more victory points than the enemy at the 30 minute mark. Every skirmish game in Steel Division begins in Phase A. Phases determine your requisition points income at different times in the game and your access to certain units. Phases change every 10 minutes up to the final Phase C. Notice the A, B, or C letters on the unit's pack. B and C unit packs are presently locked. When you build your battle group, make sure to take into consideration which unit pack will unlock to fit your strategy. Position various types of unit in the deployment zone. Click on the launch battle button. Something extra to note about the phases is that on the right side under the teams, you can see the current requisition points you are gaining for your phase. So 90 in phase A currently. Phase B we will gain 120 and in phase C 150. This is also duplicated up in the top left where we can see the plus 90 income. Every minute we gain 90 income and we are currently starting with 200 points. So let me just place down some infantry. I need to maintain the entirety of the front line so I am going to place infantry so that I can do so. I'm going to start with some AB rifles and I'm going to place one unit of those on the left and right. I'm going to accompany those by airborne leaders and the reason I'm going to be doing that is because infantry alongside an airborne leader will get its extra veterancy which is very useful. I'm also going to be bringing in an M5A1 Stuart. Let's launch the battle. Now I didn't give orders at the beginning of the battle, but you can give orders during the deployment phase before you click launch battle. In this case I did not. Let's hover over the units by selecting them all with one big drag box and I'm holding shift to view their orders. In this case I have given fast move orders using F in order to move the units to their locations. You can also use Y to do the unload at position order, which is also a very useful command. I'm keeping my M5A1 a little bit further back because I am unsure of what would be ahead. At the beginning of the game, it's always important to consider your opponent's moves and order your own units appropriately. At the beginning of the game, it's always important to consider your opponent's moves and order your own units appropriately. You have just received Ready, plus sir. 90 requisition point. Requisition points are earned every minute and are feedbacked on your requisition menu. Requisition points increase at each phase change. You earn plus one victory point every second. It means that as long as you retain control of at least 51% of the map, you'll keep scoring every second. Push forward, expand your territory, and your score will continue to increase. The cost of a unit is indicated on its card. Buy or save your requisition points for your next move. It all depends upon your strategy. The front line dynamically measures the ground control during the game. The influential areas and the domination gauge are displayed on the top right panel. It is crucial for your success to keep an eye on this information. The enemy earns one victory point every second. It means that as long as he retains control of at least 51% of the map, he'll keep scoring every second. You need to fight him off and expand your influence area or his score will continue to increase. So here I have brought up two more scout units and I've unloaded them. 
after all of his talking we have another 90 points to use so I'm going to bring in another M5A1 Stuart and in this case I'm going to move forward the M5A1 Stuart next to the scouts so that I can see this grenadier squad. I'm going to align my machine guns and the Stuart on target and start engaging him. And the Stuart is a very good unit for ripping apart enemy infantry thanks to its 330 calibre machine guns. You can see that's exactly what happened there before they started running away. Enemy spotted. Now this front line, you can see, is pretty wiggly at the moment. Currently this tells me that there is an enemy unit on this right side maintaining presence on that side of things. What I'm going to do is move my AB rifles and AB leader to the right side tree line, whilst continuing to move forwards with my scouts. Now I am going to reveal a grenadier squad here I'm going to engage them thanks to the 30 cal we are going to do a lot of damage to them in the open but one thing to note is that my squad is not using their submachine gun because they are not in range I'm going to continue moving my AB rifles now towards this IG I'm also going to move my airborne leader through the tree line to get rid of this fire support unit in the center of the map my M5A1 has bumped into a AT gun and that is going to be taken out because the M5A1 did have its tracks broken by a shot previously. Sir, yes, sir. It's important to know your vehicles can suffer critical hits and that's shown in orange text. So how do I get rid of that AT gun? It was covered briefly in the previous tutorials but in this case I'm going to bring up myself a couple of mortars and we are going to engage that as long range as possible and then what I'll do later on is bring up more tanks to push my advantage. I'm also going to bring up some reinforcing infantry alongside another airborne leader. Now currently I am winning with a plus two lead. This is due to controlling 60% of the map. This is currently adding two points a second to my total score. If you own more than 51% of the map that will give you a plus one. If you own more than 58% that will give you a plus 2. This can also exponentially increase. If you continue to control more of the map you will continue to increase the amount of conquest points you gain. So here what I'm going to do is use these mortars alongside an airborne leader to make them 3 star mortars. This will yes, significantly increase their fire rate and allow me to Blast take on area. this IG. I'm going to use a fire position order with T to focus on the edge of the hedgerow there and predict where the unit is going to be before my mortars fire. But this is just a matter of me timing how long it takes for the mortars to aim alongside how long or how far the enemy unit is going to be moving. Fire. Smash him. In this case he's falling back so I'm going to start Adjusting aiming behind him. Hopefully he will fall back into more sir, mortar yes, fire. Sir. I'm going to move my infantry to the right side keeping them in cover these trees do cover your forces and you can see that by the blinking icon basically means that your units cannot be seen since I'm going to be using a lot of mortar fire I'm going to bring up a supply vehicle to resupply them mortars and other units like AT can be hidden like infantry but generally are spotted quicker by enemy recon and in this case I'm going to be bringing in a P-51 Mustang to shoot down the enemy recon aircraft. And you can see Any by orders? filling its suppression bar the aircraft has begun to fall back. So my Mustang is very fast and this is what I was stating while we were making our battle group. I'm going to have a hard time getting onto the Storch because it will overshoot it every time. Managed to shoot it down in the second run which is nice. I'm actually going to continue to use my Mustang to attack ground forces. In this case I'm going to retreat my mortar since it is under fire from the enemy IG. It can be seen. 
also going to withdraw my other mortar so that that can't be seen either. I don't want either of these mortars to be taken out by that IGA team, which is a HE support gun, which can help blow up enemy infantry very effectively, although it has no effectiveness against armor. Currently, I, have I haven't destroyed the enemy AT gun, so I can't continue with my tank just yet, and that's kind of what I'm waiting for here. Awaiting instructions. Managed to destroy an enemy grenadier unit on the ground there. That was possible because the Mustang and other attack aircraft will continue to fire upon the last known location of a ground unit unless told otherwise. Now the grenadiers are dead, what I'm going to do is attack this IG. I'm actually going to begin to move the AB rifles up towards it. And I'm now going to add mortar fire. When using artillery, it's always worth considering smoke. Smoking either your unit or theirs. In this case, using HG rounds is more efficient due to the rate of fire of the mortar. Ground control is going well, sir. Keep going. I've just taken out that uh, support unit there. I'm going to actually move up my airborne leader along with my airborne rifles to make some ground. I'm also going to begin to move my scout recon forwards on both sides of the map. I'm deciding to do this because my recon can no longer see enemy units and I have just scored a kill onto the unit holding me back. Currently I have quite an excess of unit points. That's because I'm not losing units very quickly. I am going to continue to bring in more reinforcing infantry and machine guns though because it's important to keep using your points even if you are ahead. Now what I want to do is be able to get my mortars into range of the pack 38 but currently I'm having trouble dealing with these MG42s which have an 800 meter range. Now I can see these AT guns, I can effectively deal with them. I'm going to bring up another mortar to join my other two. Furthermore, I'm going to bring in my machine guns on the right alongside another tank to help me defend the right side. It's less likely for them to have AT there because they have two AT guns on the left. Now I don't want this rifle squad to be attacked by the MG42 because it's supposed to be pinned down. And what I'm going to do as soon as it is, is actually fall it back using the R button. This is another example where I could have used smoke to cover my infantry. But again in this case it's more efficient to kill the enemy unit with HE the rounds. Of a new phase. phase B units are now unlocked alongside a rise in your requisition points income. So since I've made the machine guns fall back, what I'm going to do is move forwards with my mortars into range of their pack 38 and start attacking that. The more I'm going to take the opportunity to move forwards my tank. Now the AT gun is pinned, I can attack it safely. Keep an eye on the front line. It's useful feedback for predicting the opponent's movement and positioning. Ready to fire. Fire! Smash him! So I can bring my unit up to range here and then help with my stewards to attack. I brought up some machine guns. I'm going to move them in front of my infantry to provide fire support across the open. Also going to unload my machine guns on the right side to provide fire onto enemy infantry alongside my steward. Enemy Flak 38 is coming up the road and is going to be engaging my M5A1. However, it is going to be forced back. Now I'm going to bring in a Sherman since they are available in Phase B. So continuing to use mortar support. I'm going to move my scouts further forwards so they can provide recon. What I want to do is find the second AT gun that we spotted earlier and that will allow me to move forwards with the tanks after it is killed or pinned. It's really useful to remember information on what you've spotted previously. Now what I could do is bring out a grasshopper however in this case I probably don't need one with my scouts on the ground. What I will do, however, is bring up an M8 Greyhound to provide 
a scouting vehicle for my tank support which I am currently bringing up in the form of the M4A1. And remember, motorised recon is always good support for tanks. Now since we have reached phase B, we now have access to our 50 calibre machine guns. These are extremely effective at pinning infantry and support units, even light armour, at range. There are two AT guns ahead of us. What I'm going to do is mortar both of them. Do you have a target, sir? And leave one of my mortars to attack the MG42. Once both of those AT guns are pinned down, what I can do is just charge them. I'm going to use my F command here, fast move, to move towards the enemy AT guns. And since all of these tanks have a lot of machine guns, we will be able to take out the majority of the light units that are left over. So in this case, it's a matter of being patient and picking the right movement to move forwards with powerful units. Sir. Out. Currently they brought up another pack 38. What I need to do is move forward to my recon alongside my mortars to find that and then hopefully take it out. What I'm going to do on this left side here is start to move forwards with my rifle squads and the airborne leader to take the ground. Infantry is very good at holding ground, so if you have made a spearhead with heavier units, like in this case, then moving forward your infantry and taking control of that is a good idea. Don't forget to bring up units that have remained behind your lines for a little while. This is a big waste of requisition points, which could be put towards increasing your lead. Currently we are running 63% territory, which is very good. Now you must be aware that the scouts can only see so much, and it has to be in line of sight. You can check this by holding C, or pressing the I button in the bottom right. So in this case, there could be something behind these trees that I haven't spotted yet. However, thanks to having uh, recon units on both sides of the trees, I can more happily predict that there will not be too much there. In this case, enemy mortar fire is coming down onto my mortars, commonly known as counter battery, trying to use your artillery to take out their artillery. In this case, the AI is using a mortar, but commonly counter-battery is performed by artillery with longer range than the target. I'm going to move my machine gun over to the right side to help with that mortar. I'm going to continue to move up my infantry on the left side to gain more ground, whilst my units continue to push forwards. And this is a good time to recommend using attack move, Q, when moving towards enemy units. It's very useful and I use it all the time. I'm trying to predict where this uh, pack 38 is going, and then hit it with my mortars. Currently my tanks are engaging the anti-air vehicle. I've just used my mortars there. To engage the enemy AT gun. Just going to move my mortar out of line of sight of the MG42 so that it can no longer be fired upon. And I'm going to continue out of direct line of sight, mortaring that so that we can kill it off. Again, I'm currently floating a lot of points, and that's what this is called when you currently have a lot of requisition points left over. It's called floating points. It's not the best strategy because at the moment I could have currently overrun them with multiple more tanks. But just so that I don't complete this mission too quickly, I'm just taking this slower than I usually would to show you guys some mechanics and ways in which you can advance your front lines. In some cases, saving requisition for the next phase or an expensive unit is justified. So in this case, I've used a series of mortars alongside recon to spot their machine guns, which were stopping my infantry from advancing. Then once the machine guns were out of the way, I was able to move forward my mortars into range of the enemy AT guns, 
enemy AT gun here it does have line of sight of my tank. So I'm just going to use the G command to reverse those out of line of sight. What I'm going to do, since I've uh, pushed forwards quite a lot, is bring up some N1 guns. And I'm also going to bring up some 50 caliber machine guns to help myself secure the front line on the right side. Furthermore, I'm going to bring up some M4A1s in the center. And that will use up a lot of requisition points. Ready to pound them, sir. It won't be long before you achieve victory, sir. We must hold our ground control just a little longer. Going to continue to be informed as my scouts sir. on the left to provide me with that recon information. It's currently two minutes until phase C. Hopefully, we will see phase C. Because some of the interesting units in Phase C include the M10 Destroyer and also the Calliope, which hasn't actually been shown in Wait the tutorials yet. Are you sure it's safe there? My Jeep Supply Vehicle is also almost out of supply. You can actually tell this but in the bottom right by uh, looking at the, the number. Currently 0 out of 5,000 because I've run out of ammunition. Six Over. Going to select my mortars here and engage the AT gun on the left side. Saluting the captain makes him a target for the Germans. You're going to move forwards Head my orders, command sir. tank here to improve the veterancy of these mortar squads. Now another thing that I would say is worth knowing is if you select artillery for example, you can use control groups a lot like other strategy games. So I can use control 1, then if I click away from them and select another unit, and I just click 1 on my keyboard again, it will select the mortars. Same with my tanks, another example, if I select multiple of my tanks by clicking on one and then shift clicking on another, that will, add, that will allow you to support or control more than one. Then if I go control 1, that will override the previous group control. Yes, sir. If I click on another unit and then click 1, it will go back and select the units that I put in that control group. Definitely something useful to know. So 18 seconds until phase C. Let's bring in some air power. Just to have some fun. What I'm going to do is actually engage this IG-18 on the right side. Plus a final rise in your income. It is time to unleash your full potential. An artillery piece of the Calliope costs 200 points. Not sure we're going to see it in action. But what I will do at the edge of the map is just target it and uh, make it aim straight away. Maybe we'll see it before the end of the game, but unfortunately not, since we have reached 2,000 points. Well done, sir. You have proven yourself worthy on the battlefield with the knowledge that you've acquired. You've understood the main victory conditions in Steel Division and how to use economy and phases to your advantage. Be ready to ship for Normandy, sir. And there you have it. My tutorial skirmish for you guys. Hopefully I've included a lot of extra information in playing out the tutorial for you. And if there's any questions that you have, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will happily answer them as well as the community. The community has been great on this game so far and I really appreciate those of you who have answered other people's questions in the comments. So there you go guys, that is our tutorial skirmish over and done with. You can see if you go into the team tab how many kills and losses you got. If you go into the history tab it will show you all of the units that were killed in which order. You go to the kills tab, it will show you all of your kills by specific units. And if you go to the losses, it will kill it will tell you what losses you had to enemy units. And then experience is for leveling up your profile. So there you go guys. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.